Good day. This time on this video, I'm going to be going over solving logarithmic equations. So we're going to look at some equations involving some logarithms, and we're going to solve them using some properties. What I recommend here is to keep in mind these three key points. The first is that simplifying using logarithm properties when you can do it. So if you have an equation that involves using logarithm properties to simplify it first, make sure you do that first. Now, really, two things are going to happen. You're either going to have one logarithm in the, at the end, in which case you want to convert the logarithm into an exponential equation, or you're going to have more than one logarithm. Really, you're, only, you're going to have two after you've used the logarithm properties to simplify it. If you have two, you're going to use the equality property that I went over in the previous video, which states that if you have two logarithms equal to one another and they have the same base, then you're going to set the logarithm part equal to one another. And this is similar to when you solve e exponential equations and you have the same bases and you can just put the, uh, the two exponents together. So let's look at the first example here that I have. Solve for x. ln of x plus 1 is equal to 5. So in order to do this problem, we're going to take and we're going to convert this since we only have one logarithm equal to a number again we only have one logarithm so we want to convert this to a logarithmic I'm sorry convert it to an exponential equation so remember that ln ln is really log base e so log base e of x plus 1 equals 5 now you don't have to write this step in here if you just always remember that ln is log base e it's something you really really want to get familiar with uh, because you're going to see ln, the natural log, a lot in this class and in calculus. So we're going to change this to e to the fifth, because that's the base, e to the fifth, is equal to x plus 1, the inside. Now we're going to solve for x, so we're going to subtract 1, and we're going to have x equals e to the fifth minus 1, because we subtracted 1 from both sides. And that's all we can do with this um, because we want to have an exact answer. If we wanted, we can plug this in the calculator and see what that is going to be approximately, but this is going to be our answer. All right, let's take a look at another example. I've got about four or five examples here for you. So we're going to run through as many of these as I possibly can. We've got two on this page. So we've got three times ln of 2x minus 1 equals 8. So in all of these, if we see one logarithm, we're going to solve for this one logarithm. So we're going to solve for this part first and then use our exponential um, conversion so that we can solve for the, for the, for the uh, variable. So first we're going to add 1. And we have 3ln x, 3ln of 2x equals, we're going to add 1 to both sides, 9. Then we're going to divide both sides by 3. And we're going to have ln of 2x equals 3 because we divided by 3. Okay. Now we can convert. So remember that ln is log base e, so we're going to have e cubed, okay, base e, 3, equal to the inside, 2x. And we're going to solve for x. So we're going to divide by 2. And our answer is going to be x is equal to e cubed over 2. Okay. Uh, you can write this if you want to. You can also write it as one half e cubed, okay? Because the two just cancel one half. Okay. Either way is works. Let's look at a new example. Solve this equation here: log of four x minus five minus log of two x minus one. Now, I said that you can use log properties and put this together. Um, so there's actually two ways you can do this problem. You can put this together using the minus property. So we're going to have log, and I'll show you both ways actually. So let us um, let me show you the first way first, and then I'll show you the alternative. So we're going to put these together as um, log of 4x minus 5 over 2x minus 1 using that my subtraction property that we used in the last video, equal to 0. So now we're going to put this together, and remember that log is a base of 10, if it doesn't say it, base 10. So 10 to the 0 
equals 4x minus 5 over 2x minus 1. 10 to the 0 is 1, so we're going to change that to 1 over 4x minus 5, 2x minus 1. And we're going to multiply this to both sides. So we're going to get 2x minus 1 equals 4x minus 5. And now we can solve this. So we're going to subtract 2x to both sides. Subtract 2x. And we're going to get negative 1 equals 2x minus 5. Add 5. 4 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. We're going to get x equals 2. Okay, so that is one way of solving this. The other way, remove this. The other way of solving this is to add log of 2x minus 1 to both sides of the equation to start with. Okay, minus 1. So then we're going to end up with log of 4x minus 5 is equal to log of 2x minus 1. And notice here that the 2x, now we have the logs equal to one another with the same base. So we can just take the inside of the log, which is called the logarithm, and set them equal to one another. So 4x minus 5 equals 2x minus 1. And this is just like the last step we saw in the previous way to do it. So we're going to end up with uh, subtracting 2x and adding 5 and then dividing both sides and we're going to get x equals 2. Okay, so same way. Now with logarithms, it's really important to plug this back in to your equation to make sure that it works. Now when I say make sure that it works, when you look back and we did um, logarithm graphs, when we were introduced and when I introduced logarithms, we did the graph and we noticed the logarithm went like this. Okay, we noticed that all the x values were not negative. In fact, the domain was zero to infinity. So knowing that the domain is zero to infinity, we know that we cannot have a negative number inside of a logarithm. So if we plug this value back in and for some reason this ends up being negative, it is not going to be in our domain and it, it's not going to work as a solution. And we'll see that coming up in another example. So let's take a look at the next example. So we have here ln of 11x minus negative 11x plus 2 equals ln of x squared plus 30. So notice here we already have the logarithms with the same base. So we're going to take the inside, negative 11x plus 2, and make it equal to x squared plus 30. We have an x squared here, so we're, we're dealing with a quadratic. So with a quadratic, we want to make sure everything is on one side of the um, equation. So I'm going to add 11x and subtract 2. Add 11x and subtract 2. And I'm going to get x squared plus 11x plus 28 equals 0. In order to solve this, we need a factor. So x plus 7 times x plus 4 equals 0. So then we get our x answers is x equals negative 7 and x equals negative 4. Now, remember that we need to plug in each of these to see if the solutions work. So I'm going to plug in negative 7 here and here to make sure that we don't get a negative value. Okay, so negative 7 in here is going to give me positive 7. So let me write down x equals negative 7 here. And we're going to check. So these are this is our check here to see if our solutions work. So x equals 7 is going to give me negative 11 times negative 7 plus 2, which is 77 plus 2, which is 79. And we're going to have negative 7 squared plus 30 which is 49 plus 30, which is 79. So good, that checks out. We just look at the inside. Um, let's check negative 4. So we're going to have negative 11 times negative 4 plus 2, which is 44 plus 2, which is 46. And negative 4 squared plus 30 is 16 
plus 30, which is 46. So good, they both work out. So we have two answers to this problem. Um, and there we go. So let's take a look at one more. And the next one is solve this equation here. So what we're going to do is now we do not have two of them on one side. So I've got to actually put these two together using the property that I can put them under one. Excuse my horrible handwriting. Put them under one, uh, put them in one logarithm. So we're going to have x times 2x plus 5 equals ln of 7. And I'm going to multiply this out. Now, notice here that the logarithms are the same. now. So we're going to go and multiply this out. 2x squared plus 5x equals 7. All I did was I put the logarithms inside equal to one another since I had them both there. Um, again, we have a quadratic. So we're going to put the 7 on this side. And we're going to factor this. So 2x plus 7 times x minus 1 equals 0. And x equals negative 7 halves and x equals 1. And again, we want to check to make sure that these work. So let's do our check here. Our check is actually, in this case, pretty simple. Plug in 1. Let's check x equals 1. And we plug in 1 into our original equation, not after we saw simplified, but our original one. It's really important that you do that. We always check our original one. So we plug in 1 here, and we're going to get ln of 1, which is 0. And then 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 5, is ln of 7. So we're going to get ln of 7 equals ln of 7, which works. OK, so x equals 1 works. Let's plug in negative 7 halves. When we plug that in here, uh-oh, ln of negative 7 halves does not work. We cannot have a negative in our ln. So this one does not work. This is actually given a name. It's called an extraneous solution. It's extra. It's not really going to work for our, our answer. So this one only has one answer, x equals 1. All right, there you go, solving logarithmic equations.